Up until now, we've talked about these ideas of present value and net present value in a simple one period setting. And what we've argued is that there's this connection between present value and opportunity cost. So more specifically, if somebody comes up to us and promises to give us $1,000 one year out into the future, what we have argued is that in the present, this may only be worth $950. Why? Because as we are waiting this one year, for this $1,000 to come in, we are potentially losing out on the opportunity to earn additional return if we had the money today. More specifically, if we had $950 today and if we could use that to earn, say, $50 during this one year time elsewhere, then getting $1,000 one year from now is like getting $950 today because we could have gotten fifty dollars on this 950 and earned one thousand ourselves one year out into the future and so this fifty dollars is our opportunity cost as we are waiting this one year and so the key idea is that the greater is our opportunity cost the lower is the present value of some amount that we are expecting in the future what I want to do now is dwell upon this idea of opportunity cost a little bit more. This is extremely important for students to understand. When we say that our opportunity cost is 5%, 7%, 10%, what is it that it really means? And so what I'm going to do is use an example that I have used in the past as well. Let's suppose that you have identified a house and your real estate agent says that, look, this is going to bring in $320,000 one year from now for certain, right? So be absolutely sure that you will get $320,000 one year out in the future. The house costs $280,000 today. So the question that we posed was that if the banks are paying an annual interest rate of 5%, would you make this investment? Now, the way we approach this problem is that we said, look, if our house is going to generate a $320,000 cash flow one year out, then while we're waiting for this to come in, we're losing out on the opportunity to earn 5% elsewhere, which is in the banks. And so the present value of this $320,000 is 320 divided by 1.05 which is 304,762. Put differently, if somebody asked us, you know, what is the absolute maximum that you'd be willing to spend on this house? We'd say 304,762. Why? Because if the house costs something like, I don't know, $310,000 today, you'd say, why should I spend 310,000 over here only to get 320 from selling the house one year later when I can put 304,762 in the bank earn 5% on that and get $320,000 myself. Now, if the house costs something less than this, oh yeah, count me in. In fact, for that reason, we said that this house is a good investment or the net present value of this house is positive because what you're willing to spend, which is 304,762 minus what you are actually spending, which is $280,000, this is greater than zero. It's a positive NPV investment. You should make this investment. Okay, so that's all well and good, but now let's change things a little bit. Let's suppose that your real estate agent now comes to you and says, look, it's the same house. It costs $280,000, but now I am not absolutely certain that you can sell this house for 320. In fact, I think that there is some risk involved here. More specifically, she says, look, I think and that in one year's time, you can either sell this for $360,000 or maybe even for $280,000. So plus minus $40,000, say with equal chances, so that on average, you're going to be getting $320,000. If I now ask you, you know, what is the maximum that you'd be willing to spend on this house today? Would it be 304762 if you think about it logically, the answer is no. In fact, you'd argue that I'd want to spend something less. Why? Because 304,762 was what you were willing to spend when this 320 was riskless. But now if there is some risk involved here, if there could be a downturn in the real estate market, you could potentially lose your investment or not make any return. 
would you be willing to spend the same amount? The answer is no, you'd be willing to spend something less. Why? And this is the key. Because there's risk involved, more specifically, you'd be like, look, I want a higher rate of return on my investment. I'm no longer satisfied with just 5%. 5% is what I can make without any risk. If there's any risk involved, then the rate at which I'm going to discount my cash flows needs to be higher to reflect that level of risk. And so this is the key. This is the key. 5% was your opportunity cost and your discount rate when this $320,000 was guaranteed because this was an apples to apples comparison. It was $320,000 which was guaranteed or a 5% which was guaranteed elsewhere. The moment this $320,000 becomes risky, you cannot discount the same $320,000 at a 5% rate because 5% is riskless. In fact, your discount rate would need to be something greater than 5%, which reflects the added level of risk. And that is the idea that is captured by this answer that you gave, which is that I'm willing to spend less on this house right now. Implicitly, you're using a higher discount rate to discount the same cash flows. Now, one question that you may ask is that, okay, I understand that my discount rate needs to be greater than 5%. Okay, that's all good. The question is how much greater? More specifically, how do I know specifically what is the amount that I should be willing to pay for this house today? I know it needs to be lower than 304,762. The question is how much lower? Now, that's a good question. I mean, it would be great if we had financial models which would tell us that, you know, for this much extra risk, this is how much your discount rate should go up by. It turns out there are such financial models, but we are not going to go that route right now. However, one way that you can approach this problem is as follows. You can take a look at this, this 320. You can say, okay, I understand that there's some risk involved. Let me take a look at other investments which are as risky as this $320,000. And let me see what is the rate of return that is being offered by those investments because now I'm making an apples to apples comparison. I'm looking at this house and this level of risk and I'm comparing it to what else I could have done on an alternative investment of equal risk. And so this is the key. Whenever we talk about opportunity cost uh, in finance, we we have a very specific meaning that we give it give to it it's the rate of return we could have earned on an alternative investment which is of equal risk and so let's suppose let's suppose that uh, there are other investments which are which are as risky as this three twenty thousand dollars right now and the rate of return that we can earn on those is something as high as twenty percent in that case we're saying that the maximum you'd be willing to pay for this house now would be $320,000 divided by 1.20, which if you do the math gives you $266,667 approximately. And now all of a sudden, this investment doesn't seem worthwhile because you'd be spending $280,000 to get 266,667 you'd be better off taking the same amount of money and putting it in an alternative investment that is as risky because the rate of return that you're generating on those is higher. And so again, the key here is that opportunity cost or your discount rate, discount rate is always the rate of return that you could have earned on an alternative investment of equal risk in fact, for that reason, sometimes you may hear the term, you know, what is your risk adjusted? What is your risk adjusted discount rate? And the idea is the same. Your discount rate must reflect the level of riskiness that is embedded in the cash flows. Now, before I conclude this video, there is one important thing that I want to emphasize. In my experience, students often get lost in jargon. You know, they'll hear the term opportunity cost, they'll hear the term sometimes like cost of capital, they'll hear the term like applicable or relevant discount rate. Look, they all mean the same thing. We know that our opportunity cost is the rate of return we could have earned on an alternative investment of equal risk. 
we have just argued that it is this opportunity cost that is always your discount rate so we can call it our applicable discount rate we can call it our risk adjusted discount rate we can call it our relevant discount rate cost of capital means the same thing so going back to your example look if you were being asked to dish out two hundred and eighty thousand dollars to invest in this house for this risky three hundred and twenty thousand dollars one year from now you're saying look if i put this money in this house my opportunity cost is 20% or more specifically, if I put this capital into this house, my capital is costing me 20% I could have earned elsewhere. And so my cost of capital is 20%. So opportunity cost and cost of capital or applicable discount rate, they're all the same thing. Sometimes you'll hear the term required rate of return or expected rate of return and again look going back you know if if you know that you're going to be dishing out two hundred and eighty thousand dollars to invest in this house knowing that there are other opportunities which are as risky that are going to generate twenty percent you're going to say look the rate of return that i want from this house the rate of return that i require is also 20 percent at least right because that is what I, what my opportunity cost is put another way you're expecting that this house will give you at least 20 percent because again the next best thing that you could have gotten is 20 percent as well your opportunity cost is 20 percent as well so my point is this when you hear the term opportunity cost or cost of capital or applicable discount rate or relevant discount rate or risk adjusted discount rate or required rate of return or even expected rate of return guess what they all mean the exact same thing by the way uh, i don't know if uh, some of you know this guy but this is eddie murphy and eddie murphy is playing all these different roles uh in the movie nutty professor yeah all these five guys he's basically this one guy eddie murphy and that's kind of my point uh Opportunity cost, cost of capital, discount rate, all these terms, they're basically the same, one different ways of saying the exact same thing. The key takeaway uh, from this video is this, your opportunity cost, which is the rate at which you discount your cash flows, must account for the level of risk that is embedded in those cash flows because your discount rate needs to be the rate of return that you could have earned on an alternative investment of equal risk.